Now, in our first story, a total of 2,065 health workers across the country have been infected with COVID-19. That's the latest from the Ghana Health Service. Now, Ghana's case count now stands at 26,125 with 139 deaths. Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumar Bwaje, lauded the health workers for their bravery and commitment to the fight against the pandemic. He spoke at the bi-weekly news conference at the Information Ministry. We decided to share with you an update on the, our health workers infected. And we believe that we want to salute them for the job they're doing and the courage with which they are working and the fact that they are, they are even back to work. A half has recorded 24 in cases of staff who are infected. Five have recovered and are back to work. And 19 are still are active cases who are being treated for. Fortunately, they are all asymptomatic. Ashanti has had 245 case health workers infected. They've recorded two, they've recorded 228 recoveries two deaths and currently there are 15 active cases. What it means is that the 228 are back to work despite their exposure to work. Bono is at half 53, they have all recovered and so they don't have any active case. Bono is has reported 88 health workers who are infected, they have all recovered and they are back to work. Central region recorded 295 cases all but 31 are still active, so 264 have recorded and CAC to work. Eastern Region has had 43 cases and seven recoveries, so they currently have 36 active cases. That health workers who are currently not at work. Greater Accra has had the largest number of infections, 588. 536 of them have recovered and returned to work. We've lost three and we have 14 active cases. There are 43, 49 cases of health workers who are still going through care either in isolation, home or those who are in treatment. Northeast has had two, recently two cases and they are yet to discharge. They are yet to over, so they have two of them. OT has reported 47 cases of health workers being infected 40 have recovered, and so we have seven active cases. Savannah has had two cases, they have all recovered. Upper East had 11, they have all recovered. Upper West had 15, they have all recovered and back to work. Um, Volta had 63, they had 57 recoveries, so they have six active cases. Western Region has had 150 cases of health worker infections, 140 eight had recovered, one died, and so they have one active case. And finally, the Western North has had 41 uh, health workers infected, and they have all recovered. I want to use this opportunity to also thank their health workers for their bravery and the work that they continue to do, despite the risk that they face uh, going through uh, this, uh, as we work towards combating COVID-19. Now, the Greater Accra Regional Director of the Ghana Education Service, Monica Ankara, says so far, 62 students in seven schools have tested positive for coronavirus in the region, with some of them declared recovered. Speaking during a genius disinfection exercise of the Accra Girls Senior High School, she also stated political campaigning on various campuses in the region are not allowed as the country prepares for the 2020 elections distancing for these um, students? Just this week, because they are still there, they are facing the nets, they have done the screening, they are feeling, fixing the louvers and other materials for them to be able to apply the place. And that is exactly what they are working on. So from here, you can go there and have a look at the place. I have been on. there. Uh, many have also called for an audit of the infirmary of this school, because that's the first Sort of call should mm -hmm. any case be reported. Mm -hmm. um, have we done um, an audit of the infirmary to make sure that the facility will be able to cater for any isolated case? Infirmaries are managed by the health authorities mm -hmm. and so you see the nurses around. Two of them? Two of them managing the place. They will be in the better position to explain to you whether they are of standard or not. And as I told you, they've done the disinfection and then 
they are uh, doing fumigation as well. And so we are putting the place at the right shape before we, do, we allow them to. Accra Regional yeah. Education Director, let's, let's broaden the, uh, the conversation to other senior high schools under your jurisdiction. What other measures, apart from fumigation, are being put in place to ensure that um, the safety protocols are there to? Uh, this um, comes at a time when three teacher unions have called for the closure of schools because of the, um, the, the height. Naturally, they will be scared hearing that uh, we are recording cases in our schools. They are human beings, and therefore we need to encourage them, aid them on. Because we have, what we've been told is that when there's an epidemic, you need to co uh, control it at the epicenter, mm. but you don't spread it. Mm. And so we've been asked to keep the students in school, whereby we have health personnel who will take good care of them. And you see, the numbers are not so overwhelming. In some of the school, one or two cases. And, so, and when they are tested positive, they are sent to the treatment center before they are brought back to school. And so it's better we, we manage them at that level rather than sending them home where even joining a vehicle in the house where they don't have a place to keep them is going to create problems for their parents and the whole community. And so that is the advice we are giving to them. And the, the teachers too, don't forget that we are parents. Yeah. We have our awards in all the schools, mm. what we do. Mm. Mm. So we should understand the dynamics and then make sure that we work hard so that we'll be able to achieve our desired result. The students, mm -hmm. the student, mm -hmm. they are psychologically disturbed. Yes. Like having been in school for some years, you are about to exit mm. and you've been asked to stay at home. You don't know whether to study or to stop. You don't know what to do. And parents were crying, students were complaining that they should get back to school. Now, the Ghana Health Service is calling for an incentive package for teachers in second cycle schools for additional duties in managing COVID-19. Ashanti Region Director Dr. Emmanuel Timkran said uh, he was acknowledging teachers and uh, he said that they are complementing health workers in caring for students. He says any form of motivation in recognition of their work would be in order. Ahim Interior has more. Dr. Timkran's call comes as government Walls of public pressure to close down senior high schools over COVID-19 infections. According to the Ghana Health Services, 111 students in 34 schools out of 400,000 on various campuses have tested positive. More than 400,000 students have gone back to school. They are recording about 110, 111 cases, sporadic cases across the country from 34 schools. So I don't think there's enough fear for us to rush into anything. Second cycle institutions across the country have instituted COVID-19 boards to manage coronavirus cases. Dr. Tinkron says teachers have had to contend with heavier work schedules for which they deserve attention. We, we need to motivate the school authorities. Actually, it's extra job that they are doing. And that one, uh, I think, uh, all that I'll plead is that it's just like they, they have workers. They also they have a lot of responsibilities. If there's a need to motivate them, we can also motivate them so that to encourage them to work very hard. Any form of motivation will do, but I, I can't prescribe one maybe for them. But I believe that it's a lot of work. The teachers, they are doing a lot. And sometimes we don't understand them. Yes, but I'm close to them, so I know what they are doing. It's, it's a lot of work. And, and, and sincerely, a lot of people are working. The Conference of Heads of our Sister Second Cycle Schools welcomes the call. Reverend Father Stephen Osusetche is the Ashanti Regional President of CHAS. Please do, please do. Why not? Please do. We love it. We love it. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interior reporting. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, in the Hohoi constituency has condemned the series of violent incidents that have plagued the ongoing voter registration exercise in the area. According to the Hohoi NDC constituency chairman, George Bright Enibansa, the violent incidents perpetrated by the thugs and agents of the governing New Patriotic Party, NPP, is building up tension and may lead to turmoil. It's clear that our brothers and sisters in the MPP do not want us to contest the leadership race in Hohoi constituency in peace. We have evidence that their agents, prompters, are armed with knives, acid in strangers, cajels, barrels of crocodile, 
to use in attacking our supporters. A few days ago, their own evil plan backfired on them. One of their numerous busing activities resulted in the attacks, beating up one of their own by name Kenneth Agama from Ho. Kenneth Agama is one of their organizers involved in the mobilization of illegal busing of some unsuspecting youth from Ho to come and register onto the electoral roll of our constituency. We consider these happenings to be a dent on the image of our constituency. In all this, the police have not been proactive in arresting even a single soul because of order from above. We call on the leadership of Ghana Police Service in the Hawaii Divisional Command to investigate, arrest, and prosecute the perpetrators of these brutalities and heinous crimes, crimes against innocent citizens of our constituency. By this press statement, we are calling on those being bashed to Huawei to stay away from the registration exercise at Huawei for their own safety. Now, running Mr. John Romani Mahama, Professor Nana Jane Opokajimai, is urging NDC members to turn the enthusiasm that has characterized her appointment into victory for the party in the December elections. In her first public appearance since her appointment, she charged the party's women and youth to continue working for the success of the party. She was addressing a meeting with the Minority Women Caucus in Parliament, women organizers, and other women groups. The women organizer and her group in the regions, in the districts, right down to the, um, branches. To the branches, and even further down. We know the work we, they do. We want to encourage them to do more. I have the enthusiasm that has greeted the decision of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Yes. It's not lost on any of us. I urge that we turn that enthusiasm into reality. Yeah, yeah. And we all know we can. We can. Yes, yes we, we can. can. I want you to know that you have proper names. Your name is not Kayela. You have proper names. You, you deserve the respect like everybody else. Don't allow anyone to disrespect you. That's all I want you to say. Without you, our society will not be what it is. Believe that whatever you are doing in whatever category is as important as at any level. So I just want you to, I want to tell you, thank you very much. Be confident in yourself. If you didn't get there, make sure your children do. Thank you. Professor Nana Jane Opokwa Jumang there. Up next is business, where Finance Minister Ken Oforiata is outlining the focus of the media review as he seeks to fast track economic recovery. Daryl Kwao brings us those details right after this. Stay with us. Hello, welcome. Time for business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has indicated that the media budget review would focus on programs aimed at fast-tracking the country's economic recovery. The Minister of Finance confirmed to Joy Business a presentation to Parliament would be made next Thursday, July 23. He gave details on the business edition of PM Express, which airs tonight at 9 on this channel. In, in an era of, of unknowns, um, knowing that, yes, lives and livelihoods, um, we have done well these six months. That has to be maintained. Small businesses uh, have been taken care of to a certain degree. And now we have major businesses to tackle um, and to look forward um, to a whole revitalization program of agribusiness manufacturing and uh, Ghana as a regional hub. You know, we are, we are not deterred by what we have seen because I think it's an opportunity um, to really galvanize new energy and dig deep into who we are as, you know, 
at this year that we we came to conquer. You have to, I mean, uh, certainly if you are needing more resources to be able to do what we have to do at the end of the year. And also you remember we took some money from the Stability Fund to Contingency Fund and there's, uh, I have to give a program as to how we're going to replenish that. Um, so, so those two will come. Um, I think that the issue of course is the application of the resources that we have. And I don't know, I mean it's been three and a half years of seeing how government has operated and what therefore the economy has been. And there has to be trust that we will use this money well. Um, at least from the Ministry of Finance, I can assure you that um, we and the presidency would ensure the resources are used. I mean, we are, you know, confident but that by God's grace, um, the people of Ghana will re-elect us. And if you are doing that, then you don't want to dig a hole for yourself. Huh? You, you truly want to make sure that you start January 2021 20, um, on a good note. The minister has also been talking about some massive stimulus package for industries that would be announced in the budget. Even when it is COVID, and then you are having these foreign exchange numbers, these inflation numbers, and even with this um, downgrade in uh, revenues of about 14 billion, and um, it's not only body and soul being kept together, but the real care um, for livelihoods and lives of people and our intervention into the micro, small, medium enterprises and to make sure that even the informal market is taken care of. There's a lot more to do with regards to big businesses and formal businesses and um, we expect to intervene on that level um, in, um, in the second half that we are going and we are in the middle of a recovery program um, that we are designing um, to really cut short this recession and ensure that we recover faster than most. I think the commitment, if anything, is that uh, in the President's statement, yes, we have to save life first and foremost. Um, secondly, uh, we have to get uh, the small and, and uh, medium scale and informal market people operating with resources. Um, now we have to look at the whole issue of job creation and job losses and make sure we time in it and then um, put new capital uh, into the system. As a Ghanaian, I will look at, you know, what even in the circumstances the government has been able to do and the stability in a sense that we have. There are certain personal sacrifices that are going to occur and we're going to look at all of that in, in, in the media um, to see how we can intervene to also be on the CAP bus program for MSMEs now move to big business, the hospitality industry, tourism, manufacturing, you know, aviation, and see the intervention that we need to do um, to also kickstart, you know, a recovery. So for the big businesses, you've done it for the small businesses from now on. Are we going to get something uh, for the big businesses as well in terms of a uh, stimulus package? We have to. I mean, Georgia, it's not a question of a choice, you know. This really is what you call the organizational capacity. Um, of, of the nation and we need to find means uh, of ensuring um, that they are back in business, they are employing people and they are thriving. The full interview airs at night tonight on the business edition of PM Express. Let's move on to other news. The Ghana Stock Exchange will intensify activities on its virtual platform to ensure that more brokers and clients are able to trade easily. The move is part of measures by the exchange to reduce physical interaction during the pandemic. Managing Director of the Exchange, Echo Afezi, says they hope to make trade fully virtual soon. What happens uh, during trading is that um, investors place their orders through brokers. So investors can place their orders uh, via phone or email or whatever uh, um, uh, through their brokers. And brokers can sit wherever they have uh, access to the system and place the orders in the system. So that's the way it works. A few brokers have given access to their clients. Um, I know one of the brokerage firms has given access to their clients. So has, their clients can sit in New York or Washington or London or anywhere and put in their buy, uh, buys and sell orders. So 
we have been virtual for more than 10 years. And that is why I want the whole world to know. <laughs> okay. And that is why we've always, we've won two awards for being the most innovative stock market in Africa uh, within the past 10 years. It's all because of the fact that we are highly automated, um, um, brokers trade virtually, remotely. Investors can also do that. So going forward, we will move the te technology to the doorstep of the investor to the doorstep of the entrepreneur so that we improve on the digitization of the market as we go forward. We've got a full business bulletin at one o'clock. That's at the top of the hour on the marketplace. Up next is sports. Do stay tuned.